Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Attack on Axie. Today I want to talk about breeding. And not so much as what you should breed, but if you should breed and how you should breed. Because as it turns out, when I started playing this game, I didn't actually make my return on investment, my ROE, by battling getting SLP and selling that SLP. I actually got my ROI by breeding axes. And I think a lot of people forget about that when they start playing the game is that buying three axes to battle and just sell your SLP is not the only way you can make money from this game. So let's jump right into it. Before I begin though, if you're gonna use Binance to buy or sell Ethereum, because that is the underlying currency for Axie Infinity, I do have an affiliate link down in the description so you can sign up with my affiliate link. And instead of Binance taking their regular commissions, we will both get a little bit of that back and we both win. So you can check that out if you want to. If you haven't seen my other video lately about the risks and rewards of investing in Axie Infinity currently, I suggest you go look at that. I'm gonna talk about a lot of ways you can make money today and I'm gonna kind of ignore the risks because I made a long video about the risks. So make sure you go check that out before you put any money into Axie Infinity. Once again, this is not financial advice, but I'm here to help you and give you some insight I wish I had when I started the game. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna show you something that's called the ABC method sometime. Um, and essentially you just need three axes and you can breed them forever if you do it correctly. And that's what you call a breeding loop or a breeding farm. Now I'm gonna pull up this spreadsheet I made which probably looks really complicated, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So to start with, you need to know how you breed an axie. Um, and it's pretty simple. Basically, you take two of your axes that have, they'll have a breed count on them, and you'll breed them together. And that has a cost to it. So if your breed count is zero on both axes, like if they're brand new virgins, sometimes they're called, each axis is gonna take 150 SLP and two AXS. So a total of four AXS every time you breed an axis, and a total of 300 SLP when you breed them for the first time. Then when you breed them for the second time, it's going to be 300 SLP and four axes. The ASX token stays the same. And the breeding, there's actually a uh, diminishing returns to breeding your axes. So it actually gets um, exponentially more expensive as you go up. It's not an additional 150 every time um, after the third breed. You actually can see it jumps up higher and higher. So most people will stop breeding at three or four breeds um, because after that, it starts to get more expensive. It starts to cost more to breed than you can sell the Axie for. And I'll talk about that a little bit here. So this method, essentially, all our Axies are gonna be bred twice, and then they're gonna be sold. Now, if you follow this method, it's a great way to get started, and then you can, you can deviate from it a little bit once you understand better. So essentially how it works is you buy three Axies. Now there's lots of pictures of this ABC method around the internet, and personally I find some of them hard to understand just by looking at the picture. So I wanted to explain it to you so that, because if you make a mistake here, it can cost you a lot of money, which is why you really need to understand how this works. And the underlying factor is that axes cannot breed with their siblings or their parents, but they can breed with their uncles and their grandparents, their uncles and aunts and grandparents. So essentially what you do is you buy three axes, you breed two of them, so we're gonna call this Gen 1, 1 and Gen 1, 2. And I highly recommend you go into your axes and rename them um, something that corresponds with this chart or take a pen and a piece of paper and write out your own chart with your own naming system and stick to that so that you can quickly see which axes are which and you won't make mistakes. So you breed Gen 1, 1 and 1, 2 and you'll get two offspring, right? So you've spent um, 900 SLP and um, however many AXS, and you've got two children, right? Now what you do is it takes five days for an egg to hatch, keep that in mind, and I'll talk about that more later when I talk about the ROE. And then you have a third axie, and he breeds with one of the kids, right? So this, once after five days, these two have hatched, you're gonna do nothing with this one, you're gonna do nothing with Gen 2, 1, but Gen 2, 2 is gonna breed with Gen 1, 3. Okay, you're following? And once you breed these two, you're gonna end up with Gen 3, 1 and Gen 3, 2, these two offspring here. Now, neither of these guys can breed with him. Neither of these guys can breed with him because they're their parents and they can't breed with each other because they're siblings. They can, however, breed with their grandparents. And sometimes there's reason to do this, but you need to be careful because you can actually end up having um, them, and you can have the offspring end up being siblings because they have a parent and a grandparent and, and you can complicate this. So I would not recommend 
breeding them with their grandparents here. Once you understand the system better, you can get into that for other reasons in the future, perhaps to purify axes. But what you'll do instead is you'll take one of the offspring, not both, one of the offspring and breed them with his uncle, Gen 2, 1, right? And that will get you Gen 4, 1 and Gen 4, 2, because you just bred these two twice. This guy was Gen 3, 2, hasn't been bred yet. These guys have each been bred twice now, right? Because you bred Gen 2, 1 with Gen 3, 1 and you got your Generation 4 children. Now you take your Gen 4, 2, and you breed him with his uncle and or aunt, Gen 3, 2, Gen 3, 2, and you end up with Gen 5, right? Then you take one of these kids and you breed him with his aunt or uncle, Gen 4, 1, and this loop continues forever and ever. Now, some things that can um, disrupt your loop is your genetics. And like I said, I'm not talking too much about what to breed, but you do need to understand how the genetics on an axi work. So they have dominant, recessive, and recessive 2 genes. And there also can be mutations. So I've put this information here. So take a look at this. But essentially, like 37.5% chance to breed um, this gene in offspring. So when you look at an axi, let's look at an example. Let's go to the marketplace. Let's look at beasts. And there's an extension you need for this. Um, if Honestly, if you go axi chrome extension. Freak Axes extension. It's going to be the first one that pops from Google. I'll throw a link to this in my description as well. And basically what that does is it gives you this extra row here that I'm hovering over and you can see your R1 and R2 genes, right? So this axi, um, and you can also see this P number is purity, which higher purity tends to be better. But there are reasons why um, this could be misleading because sometimes there's beast parts in here that are useless for battle. And therefore, even though it's got a high purity, you might not want it. But you can, you can tell right away something 3% like this is total garbage <laughs> um, because you're going to get a whole mix of random genes and they're not going to sell for a high value, okay? So in my, when you're choosing axes to breed, and like I said, that's not what this video is about, but I want to touch on it a little bit. When you're choosing axes to breed, this breeding calculator is super helpful here, which I put a link to here. This is an Excel sheet, so I will say, I will make this file downloadable somewhere, use it at your own risk. It's more for a demonstration. Um, so there's links to the breeding simulator and the calculator, but I've already got those open up here as well. Because basically, if you ever just wanted to not do the math yourself and you wanted to say, hey, what if I breed this axi with um, this axi, right? You just punch in two axes and you hit breed, 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 and it'll show you. And you can actually toggle the odds and this will give you the odds of them having each mouth and part and whatnot. So we're going to use this in a minute. So let's go back to our spreadsheet. So you understand that you can breed these forever, but sometimes there will be mutations on your axes. will de degenerate a little bit down the line. But for the first few generations, it's not going to matter too much. And that's actually going to, you're going to be able to get your money back before it makes a huge difference. So let's jump into how you use this complicated quick calculator that I built over here. Once you understand how to breed and what you should breed and when you should breed, then you can understand some of the math behind this. So I'll, like I said, I'll make this downloadable. Any of the highlighted red spots you can change. So I've just thrown in 26 cents and $16.4 per ASX and SLP because that's the price today. And then uh, what's our, I think our Ethereum's a little bit lower. Ethereum to USD right now. I think it's more like 1850, 1880. Okay, so, so that's 1880. So let's go 1880. And that will adjust everything else in this calculator. The breeding table stays the same. Um, this is the cost per parent. So basically to breed the parents, you can double this. Um, anyways, that's not what's important. What, so what's important? So let's take an example. Let's say you want to breed beasts. And you want a kind of standard, not so much high ladder, but lower ladder standard. Ronin Imp, um, let's go with Cottontail because it's popular for the reptiles right now and maybe um, Piercing Sound. What's Piercing Sound? Goda, Piercing Sound, Goda, okay. And you want to go the breed at zero. And you're probably going to pick something that is uh, a bit more pure just for the sake of it. So let's go, if we were going to do something like these two, 91% pure and 85% pure. And our cost is about 
nine, one for each of them. So let's say we got this guy in. So let's say you got these two and just let's run a simulation. You throw them in your breeding calculator. I know that they have the same parts and they're pretty pure. So we're gonna have pretty good odds of 87% uh, odds they have our eyes we want. Um, the ears, not great, but it doesn't matter because ears don't affect your cards. Eyes and ears are okay. So I don't really care about that. 75% of having goat on the mouth, okay. 87% of having um, imp, which is super important. 87% chance of having Ronin, which is also super important for this build. And then 75% Cottontail and 15% Nutcracker, which is also a very good card on this build. So I'm okay with that. 12% um, Nutcracker over the mouth is also good. So I would say these two are pretty good to breed. Um, like I said, I'm not going into the specifics too much. And let's just, I would run this like, you can run this as many times as you want, but just 10 times will give you a good example of like what your odds are. Because the thing about breeding is there's a lot of um, elements of uncertainty. One of those elements is the fact that you can have mutation breeds, which I put the odds here. So the chance of having one mutation on one of your axes, meaning they get a random part, is um, 37%. And that can be R1 and R2. So if it's R1 and R2, it's not going to affect um, things too much. But down the line, it could actually end up affecting you. So you look at these, um, pretty good chance of getting a purebred and a pretty good chance of getting one um, one or two parts that are non uh non-beast and actually they're carrots carrots so not bad that's like a pretty good simulation here just just so you can see what you're gambling with <laughs> honestly and what's important is so let's punch this so basically i'm gonna say if you spent if you waited on these you could probably get them both for 0.29 if you're not in a rush right i always recommend don't don't buy the first thing you see wait scale the market um see what's available so let's say you spent uh parent axi cost let's say you spent 0.29 0.29, and you're going to get a third one. And we'll say we spend the same one about, uh, let's say we spent 0.3 on the on the parent. And this varies, which is why um, the price of their axes have been fluctuating a lot lately. So I want to leave that in there. And then I want to do this offspring profit. So what's this? This is like once you've bred them and you're done with them and you're going to sell them off, what, what can you get for them, right? Because you can resell these axes. So what I want to do is I want to go back to my marketplace. Uh, let's see, did it save my parts? It did. Excellent. It hasn't been working perfectly lately. Um, and now instead of, oh, I left a, yeah. So now let's say they're going to have two breeds on them. All right. So best case, um, we've actually got any purity. So if you look at, if you end up getting something like these that are less pure, they have two non-parts that are kind of shitty, but they have all the pieces you want. So, so around like 0.2 you could sell them for. And if your pure breeds, still about the same price, actually, 0 0.20, 0 0 0.205, 0 0.21 kind of range. So what's the best price you're going to get? 0 0.21. What's the worst price you're going to get? Point, well, I'd say 0 0.19. Um, this is just the median of these two numbers. So let's say, and this could get really complicated <laughs> because you can look at the odds of having, a, having your best versus this. This is just taking the medium to give you a rough idea. Because we can see roughly our offspring, like whether they're 4% or 6% or whether you lose one of these moves, um, like if we lost imp. If you lose imp, it's going to go down quite a bit. Um, but you you might still be like 5 pure, pureness, 0.16. So maybe even just to be a little bit conservative, let's say that like worst case is 0.17. And more likely we're going to get a, like a 0.19 medium. Um, so that's fine. So that will give you that. So that's basically what you're expecting. You're expecting to pay 0.3 to buy each of these. And then you're expecting once they've been bred twice, you're going to sell them for 0.19. That's what you're expecting. And this fluctuates a lot, which is why this is risky. Um, and here's what I've done. So if you don't play the game at all, let's say you never play the game because you don't want to, you don't have time. You're just interested in breeding these guys when you can every five days. Your breeding cost is going to be $431. Your sale price Ah, I was gonna say that seems high. That's if you sell two. Sorry, this is each. This is each generation. So this is basically after you breed two, um, you breed them, you sell them. You breed two, you sell them. Eventually. So well, I'm not where I'm not taking this guy into account here, um, which I should be, but I'm not. Just telling you that. So and like I said, rough calculation here. So you you, you breed them. It costs you four hundred each round each time you do a new generation, and you sell them off for seven hundred bucks each time you do new new generation. So. That gets you a net profit of 283, right? 
this minus this, pretty simple. So every, every round you're making 283 bucks. So how long is it gonna take you to make back this $1,654 it costs you to buy all three at an Ethereum price of that, right? Because it costs you this much Ethereum at that price, it costs you 1,600 to get one, two, three, generation one. And each time you breed them, you're making, each time you breed two of them, you're making $283. And this is if you buy all your SLP. So it's gonna take you five generations, 5.8 generations, and you can do a new breed every five days because it takes your eggs five days to hatch. So that means in 30 days, you will make back $1,600. That's pretty good. Now, if you earn SLP yourself, so if you already have three axes, or if you have a way of um, generating SLP otherwise, like scholarships or like um, you're playing the game with some of these axes, I'll talk about that in a minute, and you grind 180 a day, which is the minimum you need. You need 900. Um, you need 900 SLP each each time you do this. If you look at the table, you can figure that out. And that every five days, if you guide that by five, that's 180 SLP. So that should be your goal to grind every day would be 180 SLP. So that makes your breeding cost $66, which is pretty good. Um, and that is basically the cost of getting AX, AXS tokens, right? Um, and your sale price stays the same. So now you're making $650 each time you sell these. And with that, it's only gonna take you 2.5 generations and 12 days, basically 13 days to get back your return on investment. That's a pretty fucking good return on investment, 13 days, right? Even 30 days is pretty insane if this game continues like it's going. Like I said, watch my other videos for the risks. Um, but if you sold your SLP instead over um, 12 days, like instead of breeding, if you sold your SLP for 12 days, you'd make $600, right? So instead of making $600, $1,600 by breeding, you'd only make $600 by selling your SLP. So my point here is breeding, if you do it right, can be a lot more profitable than just buy, just playing the game and selling off your SLP, selling off your SLP, selling off your SLP, right? Because the whole point of this game is <laughs> like, they're trying to get it to expand as quickly and as far as possible and new players, da, da, da. So there's a lot of incentives to breed. Now, another fun thing about this calculator, if you're gonna do just for fun, let's say like ASX went up to $200. Um, your return on investment for breeding is negative now because you actually lose $85 each generation. So if this is ever your profit per generation here or um, here, like especially on this one when you're buying SLP is ridiculously negative, it means that you should sell your SLP because it's not profitable to breed. So if you're doing this, this um, this triangle down and you have your own way of generating SLP, like you're playing the game, which is how I would recommend you do it. If the cost ever gets too high to breed, stop breeding and start selling your SLP instead. Cause that's what, uh, honestly, you could keep breeding and not sell your axes in the hope that it goes back up. There are a lot of other factors, but basically this calculator would say that if you want to just keep making money, you should instead sell your SLP. That's how the system works. Same thing works here. Like if we go back to 16, 16.4, and SLP gets so high. It was at it was almost 40 cents the other day. Let's say it gets up to 50 cents. Um, you're still you're still nice in the green here. If you're buying SLP, you're still positive. Um, so let's go. Oh, excuse me, 90 cents. Here you go. So if if SLP went way up to 90 cents, ASX stays fairly reasonable. Um, if you buy SLP, it's not profitable to breed. But if you earn SLP, it is profitable to breed, right? Um, but you'd actually make more money selling SLP than you would by breeding with it, right? Because SLP goes that high. So some things to keep in mind. This breeding thing depends on the price of SLP, right? What did I have this at? 0.28, it doesn't matter because um, I'm gonna share this with you. You can change these numbers you want. Basically, I've kind of gone over how the spreadsheet works, but change these numbers. If you think you can grind more or less SLP today, you can do that too. So if you think you get 250 a day, um, you can see how fast you can breed with that. But 180, is reasonable and is actually a good goal because it gives you the SLP you need to breed without having to buy any. If you get 100 in SLP a day for five days. Lately, that's been really tough because the servers have been shitty, um, which is unfortunate, but we'll see. The team's working on it and I have, I, I have faith in them. So yeah, that's how the calculator works. That's how fast, like 30 days, that's how fast you can earn back your return investment in the current environment with these rough numbers. Play around with this, um, use the breeding calculator more, because like I said, if you wanted to say, oh, this is my worst axie, right? You can punch in that exact axie here and sell what, see what your worst axie is selling for. Um, go to your best axie, see what your best axie is selling for with two breeds on it, because you bred it twice. Um, other variations to this calculator that you might think about is sometimes people will breed three axes. 
because you can you can evaluate the cost of a third breed using this table. And sometimes it's it's um, profitable to do a third breed and just sell that breed off, right? So what you need to, if you wanted to do that, I haven't made this calculator, maybe that'll be a new video. Things to keep in mind is you've put an extra breed on each parent, therefore the value of each parent has decreased, but you've got a third child, which means the third child without breeding you can sell off as a pure breed, as a virgin, um, or you can give it to scholars. There's lots of things you can do, right? You don't have to sell off your axes. If you don't sell off your axes, your return investment is going to take a lot longer, and that's fine. Um, and you can calculate that on your own. Here's a thought. If you can't afford to buy all three and breed them, maybe you can afford to buy two, breed them, sell the parents, buy the third one, right? You don't have to do this all three up front. You just have to make sure you have enough to buy the first two, do the first two breeds, so that you can then sell these this set of parents, right? And buy this guy to start the chain. Another thing you can do is, if you start by buying all your SLP, right? You start with two axes, you breed them twice. Now you say, okay, I'm gonna use one, gen one, one, gen one, two, gen two, one, and I'm not gonna sell them. I'm gonna play the game with them to earn my own SLP, right? Arenas is gonna be a little bit tough with this. So, Getting this 180 might be a little bit harder because like even if you, let's say you have three plant axes, um, if you're breeding plants, because plants are quite popular to breed right now, there's typically one on every team. I've seen lower ladder teams with three plants that can still get five wins. You can still earn 180 SLP today with three plants. It's tougher than if you had a better meta team, but you can do it. Or even if you just play the game a little bit, let's say you just earned 100, like let's say you just played enough to earn 50 SLP a day, right? You're still like gonna pay this off pretty quick. Um, you're, this is not exact because we haven't sold these first three axes yet, but at the end of 17 days, you could, you could sell them and then the calculator would work. But these just things to keep in mind. Like you can, you don't have to sell these axes. You can use them for scholarships. You can use them to start playing the game. If you were to buy this, like everyone thinks they have to buy three axes to start playing the game, to grind SLP, to sell SLP. But there's a lot of ways you can use the breeding system to get into the game. Um, with just two axes or with these three axes, which aren't very good for arenas, uh, which aren't very good for battling in arenas, but they're good for adventure mode, depending on what you breed. And you can definitely earn your own SLP with this. And you can also like, you can earn SLP with them for a few days and then you can sell them. Like there's a lot of things you can do, right? So keep that in mind. This is all very rough. Um, get to know these recession calculations a little bit here. I will make a download link for this. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and like. If you're looking to join my scholarship programs, check out my other videos. I have videos on that. And yeah. If you got any questions with this or with breeding, let me know. In the future, I'm gonna do another video about what I recommend you breed and why, because this is just how. First, you need to understand the how to breed and if you should breed, basically, will you make your money back and how do you do it correctly? That's what this video is about. What you should breed will be a future video. So you can look forward to that. Thank you all for watching. Take care.